Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 50 of the Airy Knits podcast. My name is Ariel, and this is a video podcast where I show you all the things that I have been knitting and spinning in the past week or so. And today it is Saturday, November 18th, and I just can't believe that we are at episode 50 right now. It is half of 100, and that is absolutely crazy, but so fun. And yeah, I'm just enjoying making these videos every week for you all, and I hope you guys are enjoying it too. So let's just get started in today's video. I'll start off with what I am wearing, and I believe that I said in last week's video that I would wear this today, and so I did. This is the Ashling sweater. It is still in testing, I believe, right now. I finished it, and I think the deadline is, uh, they got, the deadline got extended, so, but I did finish this already, and so I'm wearing it. And uh, so the Ashling sweater is by Maddie Mo, and I love this sweater so much. Uh, I So I made this with Woolberry Fiber Co. Berry Surrey in the colorway Hello Autumn, and I think it's the perfect color for the time of year right now. And it is held single. So I feel like usually sweaters that are just with Surrey are usually like held double, but this one is single, single strand uh, to knit. And I knit size two, and I did size down my needles about one size, and so I use US 2.5 needles for the ribbing and then US 3 needles for the rest of the body. My finished measurements for this is about 38 inches in circumference, and so that gives me eight inches of positive ease. And the size two that I knit is supposed to be 36 inches in circumference, and so I think Mines may have grew, I guess, two inches. I did gauge swatch and I did, uh, you know, size down my needles to make sure that it all worked out. And I remember when I blocked this that I did lay it out and make sure that it was going to be 36 inches uh, in circumference. So, but I have been wearing it and so it could have just like gotten a little more stretched out. But as you see it on me, it will be eight inches of positive ease. I am wearing a tank top under this though. And I, I, I am wearing a black tank top under this. And so that maybe if you can see, like I was wondering how sheer this sweater would be since it is only one strand of Surrey. The gauge is probably around a fingering weight gauge. So it's not really open, but I did wonder like how sheer it would be. It is definitely like, in the lighting, I think you could be able to tell that I am wearing like a black tank top under it, but it's not actually that crazy. So as long as, you know, you're not wearing anything like, I don't, like a weird pop of color, depending on what color you make the sweater, then like, I think if you made the sweater using some kind of white Surrey, it'd probably be easier to see through or for it to look more sheer. But with a darker color, I think you could, you could get away with, uh, you know, wearing other colored things under it if that makes you feel more comfortable. But I am wearing a black tank top under this, and this sweater feels so nice. I think one strand of Surrey is really like it is still surprisingly quite warm. But because I I thought that maybe even though the gauge is I don't have the gauge numbers off the top of my head, but you know it's nothing to, I hope my camera focuses, but it is, I don't want to say dense, but it is like not really open. Uh, but I thought that maybe one strand of Surrey would feel more open, but it feels actually quite nice. Uh, oh, I want to show you the hem. I'm going to have to kind of stand on this chair a little bit. Here is this really pretty split hem that I always talk about when I talk about this sweater because I love the detail. It is a two by two rib on the front and back hem. The back hem is longer and it does this cute overlapping section here between the hems when you join for the rest of the body. And yeah, this is the sweater. It is so soft. I really like the fit. All of the lengths 
that the pattern said to knit to, I followed. And I really like the length of the sleeves. And there is this nice ribbing detail that goes all across under the arm. And it follows the side. It's kind of hard to see, especially because I used a variegated yarn, I feel like. But there is a one by one detail that follows along the side here. I don't know if that lighting makes it look any different. It's just subtle, but it's a cute detail. There is a double or a folded neckband at the top, and it makes it extra fluffy. I like where it sits. And there's also shoulder shaping and kind of like a, a sleeve cap is made. But as you can see on me, the it is not really like right at the top of my shoulder it is slightly more down but there is shaping for the shoulder but i actually really like how it feels and how the fit is on this and the fabric is very drapey it's very soft and cozy and i really want another one uh my friend megan who also has a podcast on youtube a naughty mess uh, definitely check her out if you haven't already, but she also tested at the sweater and we were both like, we love how this sweater feels, but like, would we make it again? And for me, I would love to have another one or multiple of these sweaters because I love how it fits. I love how it feels and it really only used not a full three skeins of Surrey for my size, which is crazy like you can get a full Surrey sweater with less than three skeins for my size because usually if I'm so I've made I usually make I say I usually do but I've only made one cumulus blouse with Surrey so far although I have plans for like five more and that is held Surrey held double and that uses for my size the one that I made I use like the full four skeins of Surrey so I could make a Surrey sweater, this one, with less than three. So I would just buy three skeins of Surrey to make this. But because it is just one strand, there is more knitting involved. There is quite a lot of knitting. It's not, it's really not too bad. It's just like pretty much making a fingering white sweater, uh, but with Surrey. And it was just a little finicky with Surrey because it is kind of a lace weight. Uh, it is... It's not something that I can, I have to look at it more often than I would with just like a non-fluffy yarn, just to make sure that I'm catching the stitches. But I do really like this sweater. I would probably not make another one anytime soon, but maybe next year I would make it again towards the end of the year because it is a really nice sweater. I don't think that Maddie put out a release date for this pattern yet, but I would definitely keep an eye out for it because it is a great one. And if you like Surrey sweaters, I do think that this would be a great addition to have. Uh, yes, so that is the test knit of the Ashling sweater. And yes, I have been wearing it quite a lot, to be honest. It's very cozy. I very much uh, enjoy it. Okay, so moving on to my works in progress for this week. I, again, always just making progress on the bajillion projects I have on my needles at the moment. I do want to try and get this number down without casting on more things. I say as I actually have a new cast on to show you this week. But we're trying. We're, we're working through our, our projects. So let me just start with... Um, this one, I think I've started like every podcast lately with this project because it, this one's going to take me some time to get through, uh, but yeah, so we're just showing progress on this, keeping myself accountable. Okay, so this is the Mackenzie Shawl by Sari Nordland, and I'm just trying to like untangle where the yarn is right now. Okay. So, how do I show this? Uh, I can't, I think now it's the length, I can't even like lift it all the way up. 
Should I show it sideways? Oh, I can show it sideways as long as it doesn't fall off my needles. Okay, so this is what I have done so far. As always, here is my stitch marker to show my week's progress. It's right down here. So we've got a few more in. I thought that I would maybe be able to finish up this diagonal garter stitch stripe this week and I am I am so close so close couldn't make it this week but that's okay and yeah just as a reminder for this project I am using Olivia and Oliver fibers in the classic sock base in two colorways so this white one is feather and then the brown pink one is woodland and I think Oh, I do. I really like working on this project. It is, as you can see, a two color brioche. So one side is kind of like the main color is the white and the other side is the brown with a really cool garter, garter stitch diagonal stripe. And I think I've mentioned this last time, but the total length of this will be, well, not measurement wise, but there will be four of these stripes. And so I'm just finishing up the second one, which means once I finish that second one, I will be pretty much like halfway done, which is really exciting. Oh, for this pattern, there is only one size for this. And I am using, I believe it is the recommended needle size, which is US four size needles. And I still have, these are still my first skeins of each colorway. And so I still have a good amount left. I think considering how much more I need to go, I think I should make it. I would, to be really comfortable that I won't run out of yarn, I would like to be able to start the third stripe while still on these skeins, just so I will feel comfortable that I will not run out of yarn right at the end, but I think we are looking good. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this one. And that's all I have to say about it for this week. Just made some good progress. And yeah, it's, I do like that now it's long enough so that I can lay it on my lap, like fully covering my lap and work on it now. And it keeps me warm. And so that's kind of fun to do. And I, yeah, I'm just looking forward to having this done because I think I've mentioned this when I first casted this on, but I really wanted to make this pattern for kind of a while, like maybe a year. And I was just waiting for the right yarn color combo to kind of like shout out at me that it wanted to be this. And so I think, oh, I'm so excited to wear this as like a scarf. And I just can't wait to kind of like, it's going to be huge. Like it's really wide, but it'll be nice if I ever have to stand outside when it's cold. So, I mean, I don't know how often that happens, but it's nice to have that option. Even if it's not that cold, I'll probably try and wear this anyway because it'll be so cozy. Uh, but yeah, so that is the progress I have on my Mackenzie. Okay, I don't know where to put all my things right now. Okay. All right, we'll just put it on the ground for today. Uh, next up is my Cinnabar shawl. This is a pattern by Andrea Maury, and it is a project that I am knitting with friends. So Emily, Maya, and Megan, we are all knitting this shawl. We all cast on together and we are using our hand spun. So Maya and Emily both spun all their yarn for this, their main color and their contrast color. I just spun my contrast color for this and Megan is using, she did not spin yarn for this, but she's using spin, spin cycle, I think for the first time, like this is her, her first project, I think. And so that's really fun. And I think she does have an interest in making this again with hand spun. Uh, so yeah, it's all been really fun. I just realized I, I stopped in the middle of a row on this. And so showing this is going to be a little awkward because it is huge and my needles are 
getting small. Okay, so I will just have to show it to you in in the circle now. Apologies for that. Maybe next week I'll actually have it. I'll have a finished row so I can try my best to like hold it out. But yeah, I just no, I just stopped there. Actually, I know it's because I took the at night and then I just like stopped in the middle of the row, which is all good. Okay, let's find my stitch marker. Oh, it's right here. Oops. Oh my gosh, the yarn is getting all tangled. Okay, so this was my stitch marker from the week before and I just worked, I don't know, that might have been three repeats of the pattern. Uh, I wish I could show this better, but it is getting a little tight on my needles. If you haven't seen the Cinnabar shawl before, it is a shawl. <laughs> And it has one side that is garter stitch and the other side is a two color brioche. And it has some fun like switching of the main color for the two color brioche side. And the brioche side grows larger than the garter stitch side. And so it is kind of like asymmetrical. And it's just been, again, like a really relaxing thing to knit on. I think I, once I've gotten like the rhythm of brioche, knitting brioche, uh, Kind of like memorized and feeling pretty good like it's a really relaxing stitch to work on and so it's just been a fun knit and because it's also in hand spun like it's so fun it's just so fun to knit with hand spun yarn uh so i've just been enjoying this making some progress here and there i let's see okay so this is the top. So we started here and we're knitting bigger here. And so I have three stripes. I think I might have had this third stripe last week. Yeah, I definitely must have. But we are working. Uh, I think that there will be a total of five stripes, but the fifth one will be like the last thing uh, that you do. So I still have, I'm still on like my third section there will be a fourth and then end I think with another one of these striped sections and so it's looking pretty good the color of my, like my contrast color my hand spun I feel like it shows up really differently on camera it's kind of hard to see colors are very subtle but you can kind of see some of that color striping like actually maybe especially in like this row it's more like purpley and then like a peach a gray it kind of goes back to the peach and purple and I just, I'm so happy with this color combination and just like how my hand spun is knitting up. I feel like the yarn has been pretty consistent throughout like uh, gauge wise or like, yeah, just like the yarn overall seems pretty consistent. And so I've been really happy and excited working through this skein. So I did spin two skeins of this. I am close to finishing this first one. So yeah, I'm curious to see how when I join with my second um, skein of the hand spun, how that, like if, if it will look seamless uh, in the colors. And yeah, so, so that's my contrast color. And then the main color is Dererum Natura Ulis in the Proverb Blanc color. I am definitely saying that wrong. I am trying. Uh, Quick reminder that everything that I talk about will be in the description down below. And I do try my best to make sure that the notes in the description are in the same order that I talk about. So hopefully uh, that is helpful because I find that helpful for me. Uh, so yeah, so if you're curious about this color, it is written in the description below. <coughs> oh, and for my hand spun, it was a, I used a Corydale fiber from Bella Filato Studios and the colorway is sand dunes. So yeah, it's all working out really well, I think. And it's going to be a really squishy knit. And so just been, again, enjoying working on this massive knit. The rows are getting so long and I'm, I'm, there's one slight problem 
that I'm having personally about this is that I'm worried that when it's an increase row, the rows are so long that I'm going to forget to do like the increases towards the end of the row because I'm just going to forget that it's an increase row. So far I think we're okay, but I'm hoping. I'll probably just have to make sure I keep counting the stitches every so often to make sure I'm still on track. Yeah, so that is this. Oh, I am using US 6 needles to make this. I believe that that was the recommended needle size. And I did not gauge swatch for this because it's a shawl and I feel like the sizing doesn't matter. The only time it kind of matters is like the amount of yarn that I would need and I think that I will be okay. So, so far we're looking good and I'm feeling okay, but yeah. Okay, so that is my Cinnabar. Next, I made progress on my Fika Pullover. It is a pattern by Sari Nordland and it is my Selena Gomez sweater. Her character wore a very similar looking one in uh, the show Only Murders in the Building, which I love that series. And yeah, I don't want to talk about it too much again because I keep, every time I talk about this sweater, I mention the show. Uh, but yeah, so let's hold it up for you all. Yay, so I, I don't know if I said this in the last episode, but my goal for this week was to finish the second sleeve. So now we have two completed sleeves. So all I have to do left is the body. I just finished the second sleeve this morning. Uh, I just had to do, I think maybe this much this morning. And because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to film today and I really want the second sleeve done. And so I got it done. But this is where I was last week with the second sleeve. And so, yeah, it wasn't too much. It, you know, it, it wasn't too much to ask of myself to finish the sleeve this week. So we got it done and I'm very happy with it. As you can see, or maybe see that the cuffs are a uh, tubular bind off, which I love. They're one by one rib. And yeah, it was fine. It's fine, good to work on. I did try it on, it fits well so far. And so yeah, I just have to work on the body now. But I think it's looking good. Wow, the red is so bright on the camera. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, so I think it's turning out really well. I think my main, my self-imposed deadline for the sweater is the end of this year because I want to wear it for the holidays. And I think we're making good time on this. And I'm liking how it looks. It is like quite bulky because it is just like the entire thing is just cables and so it does feel quite bulky. I'm curious to see after blocking how it will look and drape and all of that. Uh, the So I am knitting size one. I'm using US 6 needles for the main body and the yarn I'm using is Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the colorway pomegranate. And I think after, we'll see how I feel working on the body now because working on the sleeves when it hit a cable round didn't feel too bad because I think, at least for my size, you only had to do it eight times, eight cables in one round. So it didn't feel too bad. Those rounds didn't feel too long to do, but I think for the body, it might feel like it takes forever. But after I started doing my cables using like a cable needle or for me, not an actual cable needle, but like a double pointed needle, instead of doing cables with no cable needle, uh, it has helped a lot, I think. It actually, I think, makes it faster for me because the cables are so big. It is a five stitch, like five over five stitch cable. And so they're pretty large. They were hurting my hands and now it doesn't hurt my hands as much. So that is a good plus on that. And I do think it helped me to work through the cable uh, rounds faster, slightly, or at least feels that way because it's not as painful. 
so it's all been working out really well I think so yeah good progress so far on this sweater so now yeah just gotta work on the body and get through it so we are close though to finishing this so I'm feeling very good about that that's all I have to say about the Fika pullover so far and then I want to talk about this sweater, my superlative sweater by Samantha Guerin. And this is another friend knit. So I am knitting this with friends as well. And I started feeling extra motivated to work on this because Megan has finished, completely finished and blocked, like finished her superlative sweater and it looks so cozy and I really want one. I just really want another boucle sweater and so I felt I felt the motivation to work on this even more this past week and also my friend Katie is also making the superlative sweater in the same colorway as me so we are going to be like actual twins with this knit and seeing hers also she's not done yet but she is farther along than me and looking at it I was like oh it looks so cute and so I definitely felt extra extra motivated to continue working on this so so I did okay I think last time we talked about it oops I uh, needed to I think I just had the body done or not done sorry but I think I just work all the way until I finish the first skein which was there and then this past week I picked up the sleeve my left sleeve and I think we're almost done with this sleeve this was I would say actually quite fun to work on because boucle knits up quite fast. I think because the gauge is, or well, the it is a, I think like it, it is called boucle DK. So it's kind of like a DK weight uh, yarn. And so it, it works up pretty quickly, like surprisingly. And so working on the sleeve, it actually went by really fast for me. But one thing that I'm so happy that I started using, especially for this knit, is that it, so with boucle, it's kind of impossible to count the stitches, especially the rows. So when you're doing like increase or sorry, decreases for the sleeve, it's just like, it's kind of impossible to read your knitting. And so I have been using this uh, row counter. Is that what they're called? Uh, Megan made this for everyone at our knit night and that was so kind of her and mine's is so cute and I've just been waiting for the opportunity to use it because I just had no idea in what project I would use it in and I was like this is the perfect project to use it in because I need something to help me count my rows and I am not I am not that uh organized with my knitting in terms of like counting if I needed to count rows I guess another way I could do it is just like write it down somewhere but I just don't normally do that because I just like count it I just look at my stitches and so for this one I was like it was so handy to have a row counter for this and man I just I'm feeling a lot more confident now that like in other boucle knits now if I have to count rows I'm just going to use this it was so easy I've never used one before this is my first time using one and it's great and just the perfect thing for boucle knit because you can't see your stitches so that's actually been really fun to use and one thing I want to note I okay so I am knitting oh I think I, I said this, but I am using Explore Knits Boucle DK yarn in the colorway Oxide. 
I love this color. I forgot how much I love this color until I started working on this knit again. And yeah, it's just so pretty. So, okay, I am knitting size two for this pattern and I am using US four needles. I believe I had to size down because I did actually start the sweater on the recommended needle size. I did not gauge swatch and it was way too big. So I did size down and we are we're good on gauge. I took some measurements of like the armhole also and just like other measurements to see if it matches the schematic so far and it does like perfectly. So we are good on gauge. Uh, for my size, for the sleeves, I did the decreases to whatever rate it says. And so this marker here is where I did, did my last decrease. So there's not that many decreases. And then it says, you know, to knit until you reach, I think around like 10 inches or so, or, or you know, three inches until you want the end of your sleeve so that you can do the cuff or something like that. I am knitting this, I had to knit the sleeve way longer than the pattern state. So all of this from the marker till here is just knitting straight. Uh, and yeah, I just, yeah, it's interesting. I think the fit is fine. Like I tried it on and the sleeve fit is fine because it is still pretty wide over here, but I was just kind of surprised at how long, how much longer I need to knit the sleeve for it to fit my arm. And I don't think that my arm is longer than normal or like an average uh, size arm length. And so I don't know if maybe I noticed that on uh, the, like the sample, the main sample picture that where this the sleeve pickup is uh, is kind of like on the sample at least it's like way lower on the arm than it sits on me so ugh, I don't know the best way to show this but this is my shoulder and this is where it goes so it I mean the line is lower than what I'm the sweater I'm currently wearing but I don't know if I'm making any sense. So if I hold this up, it's gonna maybe be an awkward angle. I'm gonna hold this up to like where it's supposed to fit. And then let me just hold this out with the sleeve. And I'm like, this seems like about right. Right? For like a sleeve length with some room to add a cuff. And I know I generally like sleeves to be a bit longer and okay, the pattern does say to save like three inches for the cuff. And I think that that, I will not be making a three inch cuff. I think I'll be making something shorter, but I had to, I think that this might be like from, from here till where I am right now, this might be like 16 inches. I think that, I feel like that's what I measured, 16 inches. And the pattern says to knit until 10, which would mean a three inch cuff be 13 inches and I still have like I could still knit more for my liking anyway uh but yeah I don't know I just thought I was like oh I'm almost done with the sleeve and then I checked the measurements and I was like great we're at 10 inches and I was like oh no that's not I think it was like it was like here to me and I was like that is I need to knit some more so anyway so that is my note on that just want to make sure I said that because I need to make sure that I remember this so that when I do the second sleeve, I remember. Like, of course, I'll have one sleeve done and I can, I will compare them, but you know, I just want to make sure I keep track. And the other great thing about this row counter is that I am also keeping track of how many uh, rows I am knitting after my final decrease and so that I can make sure I really can match up my second sleeve to the first one but it's looking real good I think I just really want to have a blue place sweater 
Maybe I can have a goal to finish this this year also. My main, I mean, my main goal for this year, I was like, I just want the Fika pullover to be done. That is like a must. But now that it's looking like I will be finishing that quite soon before the actual end of the year, I could have other projects in mind to have done before the end of the year. So this could be one of them. Yeah. Uh, so that is the superlative sweater. And I think that's all I have to say about that right now. I do actually enjoy working with boucle. It does, I know some people really don't like it uh, because just the texture of the yarn makes it a little harder to knit with. But I feel like once I get into the groove of it, it's really not too bad. I do think I knit slower with boucle just because that's just like how it is, but I don't mind it that much. And I'm looking forward to, I have two other boucle garments that I want to knit and I have yarn for, but I really want to finish this one first before I cast on any other boucle knits. And also partly because I just don't have the needles available right now to cast on that many more projects. But anyway, superlative sweater. And then we have, okay, next up we have my pressed flowers cardigan. This is a pattern by Amy Christoffers. And, oh, I've really been liking working on this knit. Like, there's something calming about working with like the mosaic knitting and just seeing the flower pattern kind of happen and grow every row and working with two yarn it, like at a time for mosaic knitting is not that bad and I'm also using hand spun for my contrast color and it's just so soft I love the colors that are coming out of it and it's just so fun it's so fun to work with so really quickly before i show you my progress main color i'm using for this cardigan is the rerum natura ulis in the foray color which i think that that means forest so it's just like this dark green but kind of has like i don't know if, i could be wrong but i feel like it kind of has some like yellow we yellow undertones. I don't know if that's the right way to describe this, but it is like forest green, like trees. It looks like trees. And then uh, my hand spun. Oh, look at it. Oh, camera focus. It is so cute. I'm going to hold it here for a while. So this is hand spun yarn in that I made. It is a super fine merino uh, fiber from Nest Fiber in the Colorway Paper Kites. And I got two braids of it. I've spun both and I'm planning on using both of them. They should work out yardage wise to finish this uh, cardigan for me. And yeah, so it's so cute. Um, I'm very happy with it. The super fine merino feels so soft. It is so it feels so soft and it feels amazing to knit with. Okay, are you ready for me to show you my progress? All right, here it is. I just can't stop looking at it. I think that the color combination was a great choice. Uh, wow, and it also, it looks diff, I don't wanna say different on camera, but like I can really see like the different colors on camera that's amazing so oh here's my stitch mark I of course had to use a stitch marker that had a flower on it and of course okay pretty much all of my stitch markers are hello lavender uh, but yeah I had to put a flower one on here so last time uh, in last video I was just starting my third row of flowers and now I am starting Yes, three, four, five, six. My sixth row of flowers. I am almost there to, uh, so this is a cardigan worked bottom up. 
And so I am almost to splitting for the front and back. I think maybe after maybe two more flower rows that I'll be there, but wow, look at the colors. I just love that each row of flowers is like a different color. And I was really excited about this, this row here, which is like mostly pink, because pink is my favorite color. But yeah, they're all looking so fun and so cute together. Oh my gosh, I just like dropped a whole bunch of stitches. Okay, not a whole bunch, it was like four, we're fine. They're back on the needles, okay. But yeah, this has actually been real fun to work on. And even though I do have to look at the chart to make sure I'm knitting this correctly, like it's not too bad. And I was worried about, because if you haven't done mosaic knitting before, you it looks like color work, but you're really, when you work each row, you're only working with one color at a time. And the way that the pattern turns out is you just like slip stitches. And I was worried about rows. Like when I put this down, how will I know what row to start on next in my charts? Because I also don't write this down. It's not something, I just like to be able to look at my knitting and know what row I'm on. And I was able to figure out how to read these stitches because not every stitch is a row or like I I just didn't know how to read it but the way that I have been doing it is because I know every two rows is worked with one color I will know like if I finished off with a contrast color row that means my next two rows will be like a back and forth will be the main color and then I can look at the ridges. So oh, all of this texture is so good. So I just look at the ridges of there are rows with like the contrast color and ones where it's just your main color. And so I count the main colors from like the bottom of the flower. Like so this one right this green pearl bump row solid green pearl bump row right under the flower is like really easy to see on the chart and then you can just like count how many green uh fully green rows you have or main color rounds or rows sorry that you have and you can see that in the pattern uh, so that might have been confusing, especially if you haven't knit this before, but that is the way that I have been making sure I know what row I'm on to work on the chart. And it's worked out really well. Uh, oh, the other thing that I have been having a lot of fun with is that because my contrast color is a super fine merino, it feels very different than my main color. This feels amazing also but just like in a different way the super fine merino is so soft like so soft that like all of the flowers like I kind of just like pet pet the flowers because they feel so soft they're just like little little <laughs> little cushions of softness um so anyway that's what I've been doing with this and I can't wait I can't wait it's knitting up a lot faster than I thought that it would, but it could just be because I'm like really enjoying it, uh, working on it. So, and it also helps too that like once you finish, it's kind of like stripes. Like if you knit something with stripes, you kind of feel like it's going faster because you're like, oh, just one more stripe. Well, I'll just knit one more stripe. Or I'll, let me finish knitting this one stripe. And so for this one, it's definitely has this feeling of like, oh, let me finish like a flower row or, oh, I'm on the next flower row. It's like a nice checkpoint for this. So yeah, it's been going really well. That's what I have to say about that. So uh, yes, I am knitting size one. I forgot to say this information, I think. I'm knitting size one. And I am using, so US3 needles were used for the ribbing. I believe that that was the recommended needle size. And US5 for the rest of like the main pattern body. And that's also, I believe, the recommended needle size. And it's worked out well. 
so yeah, again, it's another project I'm loving working on and also because I'm using handspun and it's just like amazing. I just like so happy that I'm using my handspun in projects already. And I'm also really surprised for this one at also how like pretty consistent it is. Like it's quite nice to work with. There definitely are some thinner spots and some like nice fluffy spots that kind of pop out here and there, but it really honestly like you can't really tell in the finished object. So it's really fun. Uh, so that one is that. Oh, one more thing about this. I am uh, knitting this as part of the I Can Buy Myself Flowers knit along. And it's just been really fun. I'm so glad that this knit along has like pushed me to start this project because I have been wanting to make this for a very very long time and I just have been waiting and waiting and I'm glad that there's a good yarn combination that I had in mind to start this for the knit along and so it's been really it's really fun and I've been liking it as I've said like 10 times already okay moving on to the next project we've got two more projects to talk about we're almost there and we're like losing light now oh my gosh it's like getting dark so early. I don't like it. Uh, but okay, this next one is a project that I have not talked about in a very, very long time. Like, I think months, possibly a couple months, maybe three months. It's been a while. But I've picked it back up because I want to finish some things. I want to get some older projects off of my needles because I have been casting on and want to cast on new projects. Do we remember what this one was. So this is the Air Tea by Ozetta. The yarn I'm using for this is a Big Little Yarn Co. in the Organic Wool Linen Fingering Base in the colorway Nudie Kabe. And let me show you the back because that's where like the main detail is. The top back is actually knit sideways. It's like a sideways panel. And so it is looking like a crazy mess right now because I have, you have to hold these stitches. They will be used as part of the sleeves. It is a short sleeve, like it's a tank, uh, it's a t-shirt. Uh, so it has short sleeves, but you have to hold the sleeves. So I have like my barber cords on one side and I, I just don't have enough barber cord or, and I don't like to use waist yarn if I can avoid it. So I just have this now on just random needles that I have available. And I am just working on the body right now. Because once the body is done, the sleeves are short, and so that should be go by faster, I hope. And let me show you my marker here. So this is the body, and this is how much I've worked on it this past week. I really tried to make some progress here. This might be a couple inches or maybe like an inch and a half. Really just trying to finish this project up because it would have been, because it's a, a wool linen base, it would have been a really nice summer top and it will be, but now that it's cold, I don't know how often I would wear this now, or I have less incentive to feel like I wanna work on this because I just wanna work on all the sweaters. But I really would like to finish this and I don't want this to be on my needles all the way until next summer. So like we're close to finishing. We're not crazy far, you know. I think I might just need a few more inches on the body. Here's like the underarm. And I, I think I just maybe need like three or four inches on the body. It's kind of kind of long. But I think, you know, after that, it's, again, the sleeves actually might be, like, three or four inches. But, you know, it's close. And I think I still need to do something about this neckline. But it's close that I should finish it, try to finish it. Maybe this is one I try to finish this year so that it doesn't go into the new year. But we're working on it. I think part of the reason why I don't particularly gravitate towards working on it is because I am... Uh, alternating skeins for this. I am uh, helical knitting this and it's just 
sometimes in the mood for it like I'm like oh it's okay and sometimes I just like no I don't want to do that so but we're, we're getting through it we're going through it and yeah I am knitting size extra small and I'm using US 3 needles for this is that right I think it is yes so again we're just trying to make sure I did not forget about this top and we're making progress making progress we will get this done at some point okay and then I do have one more project to share and this is my new cast on this week and as you'll be able to tell I worked on this this is the project I worked on majority of this week uh, yeah I don't know I it seems kind of crazy that I've knit this much this week on top of the other things I was able to make progress on, but I love this project so much. Okay, so this is the Dad Sweater by Emily Curtis. This is a pattern that I have tested for her last year and I've been wanting to make it again. And then when I started spinning, I was like, I want to spin a sweater quantity and I did. I finished it and as soon as I finished spinning my sweater quantity of yarn I cast on and I love how it's coming out so far it is a huge learning experience for me spinning wise spinning uh, so the yarn I use for this I've talked about it in previous videos but if you haven't seen it so I got five, or I bought, sorry, got and bought five braids of La Bien Amy confetti fiber uh, when she did the release of her fiber line. And I was like, it was perfect because I actually had ideas of making, when I was thinking about what I wanted to make my next dad sweater, with, I actually thought about making it with the Lobby and Amy confetti. Actually, what is it called? It is the, oh my gosh, I am blanking. But it is the like rainbow colored tweed, like gray yarn. And I wanted to make it in that, but I just was like putting it off because I have so much yarn in stash and I want to make other things. And so I'm just putting it off. When she came up with the fiber, I was like, oh my gosh, I could make my own yarn. I could spin this yarn. And so that's what I did. I spun five braids and yeah, I've cast on. I have knit a ton on it. Are you ready to see it? Okay, ready? Here it is. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. I don't even know where to start. Okay, I am knitting size one, which is the same size that I tested and have knit before, and I like the size, and so we're knitting size one again. I am using the recommended needle size, US 5 for the ribbing and US 6 for the main body. And yeah, I am knitting using my first ever hand-spun sweater quantity of yarn. Uh, I wish the lighting was better on here. I think maybe next week, if I show this earlier in the podcast, the lighting might be better. But, oh my gosh. I love how this is turning out. And I, so as you can see, I've, it is a top-down sweater. So I've worked on the body and got to a point past the underarms. I've finished the collar, which or the neckline, which I have, it is actually in the pattern, a folded uh, ribbed neck band or collar. But in this case, I am trying to save yarn because I don't want to run out of this yarn because I, no, I've spun all of the fiber I have of this. So instead I have just knit it to half the length that the pattern says because I'm not folding it over and then I did a tubular bind off and I think it actually looks really good. Really like how that turned out. I have finished an entire sleeve. Wow. 
it is and they they are big sleeves they are comfy but they are big sleeves so I finished one sleeve I am working through the decreases on the second sleeve have got through oh my gosh when you do the uh, shoulder shaping or the cap sleeve a short rows on this sleeve it feels like it takes forever so I've gotten through that part and now I'm just working through the decreases on the second sleeve and then yeah I just have the second sleeve left to go and then the rest of the body and I think it's it's turning out really nice I really like how it's looking and okay I thought that I would maybe have to since I was worried about having enough yarn or not I was thinking I might have to and I don't want to jinx it because I'm not done with the body yet but yardage wise I think we're like okay with the sleeve I didn't do any additional increases I thought maybe because this sleeve is big I thought that maybe uh, modifying the sleeve so that it's smaller would be would have to be something I do but I think we are okay uh, but I wanted to talk about this because this is my first this was my first sweater spin and this is the first time I'm knitting a sweater with a sweater spin like with yarn that I have like the whole sweater is yarn that I have spun and I spun five separate braids of yarn and it was a good learning experience for me. I think that maybe I have not been spinning for that long and so it might have been overly ambitious for me to do a sweater spin at this point but I do feel like I had a great time. I had so much fun spinning this fiber and also now knitting a sweater with it that I just think like even if it doesn't turn out perfect which it did not turn out perfect and I'll say more details why uh, but I'm like it doesn't really matter too much because I had fun spinning it I'm having fun knitting it and I it makes me so happy and so even though it's not perfect and there were probably some things about what you should do to prepare for a sweater spin that I did not do and I did not care to do I just like spun the thing uh, that maybe it would have been better and the outcome might have been better if I did do those preparations but I didn't but I'm happy with how it came out and it's actually turning out pretty okay considering what I was kind of nervous about so I when I spun this fiber, oh, I also want to show, so I do have some of it caked up here. Yay! So I am going to be, I finished at a point where I was done with like one of the uh, skeins. And so now I was like, it's a great point to stop and then show it on the podcast because now it's not attached to anything, which is great. So I will be starting with this one. And then I have a full one more skein left. I don't think that this second sleeve will take up all of this yarn so I will have a full skein plus whatever's left over from this to work on the rest of the body so I think we will be okay with the yarn amount but so I spun five skeins and I did take um, note of my yardage on all of them and each one I got more yardage which I think is pretty funny and Part of it, I think, is because the other crazy ambitious thing I did with this was I was like, oh, for, for some reason, I was like my first sweater spin where it would be ideal for it to be quite consistent throughout all of the yarn fiber you have to spin. I was like, let's try a new technique. I will say I did spin. I did do some like practice spins on other fiber. Uh, to do like a long draw or a supported long draw which is a woolen spun technique spinning technique uh, it is different than the technique I learned which is a short forward draw 
which I think I got pretty consistent at with my yarn, which is all the other all the other projects that I am knitting with my hand spun. I uh, spun with a short forward draw, and so it got pretty consistent. But for this one, I wanted to do a, a supported long draw, and because I don't know, I just kind of felt like I wanted to do that. So it was a new technique for me making a sweater quantity. And so as you can maybe guess, what happened was as I got more comfortable with the, with this technique, with the fiber for my uh, sweater spin, I got more comfortable, which I think means I, my yarn started getting thinner because I was able to control it better. And so my first skein was definitely a bulkier spin and also less yardage than my last uh, fiber braid uh, turned out. And so, you know, just it was a good learning there. I took notes on, you know, my spinning and I probably not taking all the notes that I need to for this for any like future notes, but I took some notes for my future self. I had so much fun though making this that I cannot wait to, I'm already thinking about what I want to do for my next sweater spin um, because it's, it was just really fun. So, but anyway, so the way that I am knitting this sweater is since I have skeins in various uh, weights, I do think that it maybe went from like a worsted to possibly like sport or heavy, heavy sport, like. DK to, D, yeah, from maybe a light DK all the way to like a worsted, heavy worsted. And I'm knitting a sweater with it. And you can tell that the stitches, okay, so what I did was, I was like, where do I want it to be the bulkiest? I was like, not the sleeves. I feel like if I were to choose, you know, uh, the heavier yarn to be, it would be in the body. And so I started the body with the heavier skeins because, and so if you look at the stitches up here, they are definitely a bigger, and my camera's not going to focus because my eyes are in the shot, but they're definitely a bigger uh, size stitch than on the sleeves here. But... I did do some slight modifications. When you knit, like before joining in the round under the arm, and you knit like the front and the back to a certain amount flat, I just knit until the measurement it says in the pattern and not necessarily the number of rows. For the front, or well, there were certain parts where row gauge is quite important for this pattern. And so I did like, there were just some parts where the knitting was straight that I decreased. Uh, or if it said to just, you know, knit a certain amount with no increases or decreases, I just like knit it to the measurements and not the row count. But for the increases, I didn't actually change any of the like frequency of the increases and it actually I don't fit wise it's like turned out fine it might be it's kind of big like the armhole is kind of big but it's actually like when I put this on it's not too terribly big I didn't have to adjust the number of stitches I picked up for the sleeve like at all so it's the same number of stitches uh, for the sleeve and it worked out it doesn't you know all, all the way around it looks fine, I think. And the one thing though that I really am kind of like figuring out right now, so the sleeves, I just did two pattern. Part of that though is because I think the gauge is actually right on for the sleeves because I am using my lighter uh, weight skeins of the yarn, like my later skeins, so they have more yardage and so the yarn is thinner. So I think it worked out well. For the body though, it did end up very wide, way wider than the pattern. And because I was worried about running out of yarn as well, because I don't mind an oversized sweater, I did actually do a whole bunch of body decreases 
under under the arm and so I just did it some I started maybe can I see it I probably can see it if I look closer but I started doing some body decreases on both sides under the arms just to get it to be a little closer uh, to the body and I think that that'll be fine and I also did that partly though mostly because I would have kept it but mostly because I was worried about running out of yarn so I was like, decreases would help me save some yarn, I think. So that's, but that's the only modifications I did for this sweater. Again, like if you look at it up close, you can, you can tell that, yeah, the top portion of the sweater is significantly like a denser fabric and the stitches are way bigger than the sleeves and the sleeves are definitely more drapey and not as, dense and thick, but overall I am very happy with how this is turning out and I'm just so happy. I cannot believe that I'm already knitting a sweater out of my hand spun, like a full sweater that will be 100% hand spun. So, and I think it's turning out really cute. This is one that I also want to have done before the end of the year and I think it could definitely happen. Especially if I finished all of this in one week. Uh, so yeah. I'm very proud of this knit so far. And the spin. Uh, it was really fun. This is my first time also spinning with like these kind of like tweed bits in there. So it took me some time to get used to. But it's looking up so cute. It's turning out so cute. Knit it up and I'm very happy with it. So that is my my one new cast on this week, and yeah, I think it was it was a, it was a good one. It was a good one to cast on since I finished spinning uh, all of the yarn for it. So, speaking of spinning, since I did finish that sweater quantity uh, spin, I started another spin, of course, because yeah, I was like as much as fun as I had uh, spinning. The sweater quantity I was like I want something with more color I want a hand dyed fiber to spin next and so I decided to spin up this nest fiber club fiber it was from September this year and it the colorway is called garden path and I mostly chose this I mean I love the colors but I mostly chose this because it is a Cormo fiber and I've never spun with Cormo yet and so I wanted to try it out. So this is my bobbin so far. Uh, this is, so I am doing another fractal spin. I've just been, it's my default for right now because, and I've been enjoying it so that's what I've been doing. So this is my first half. Uh, so I finished that. The lighting is getting really bad, you guys. So sorry, but so yeah, so this is my first bobbin and I'm going to start my second one soon, but I did split up. I did bring this to show you what the fiber looks like. So uh, yeah, the next half I split up into four different sections and so I can show you what each of them look like. Uh, look how pretty that is. So this color, as you can see, has some like purpley, purpley pink, oops, sorry, uh, yeah, purpley pink, a blue, just blue, uh, some orange here, and also some like green, yellow green, golden green kind of color, and I'm just as always excited to see how these colors spin up and especially when you ply it to see how it all looks together and oh it's my first time spinning with Cormo and this might be my favorite fiber so far to spin with uh it definitely I do not know how to describe it it it's not so I, I believe Cormo is a Cordell and Merino, like, sheep combination. Uh, 
and so it definitely like squishing the fiber like touching it it is soft but it is not like the super fine merino which i guess is that the only merino i've spun is with super fine merino it is not like slippery soft but it is soft it's soft but then it's also like it's like airy like it feels very bouncy kind of like squishable and that it kind of like comes back like there's lots of air in here and then drafting it is very easy uh it does not it kind of all sticks together but not so much like targi targi like really sticks together and i think some people might find that really hard to work with so this one though it like sticks together more than like i don't know some slippery slipperier fibers or softer fibers kind of like I find it very hard to like draft it because I guess part of that could be staple length I think the staple length for this is pretty long um so it, it's really easy to draft I don't feel like I'm trying to chase the fiber everywhere um like trying to grab it and so it works out really well and it is just like it's really squishy uh and yeah, I'm just like really excited to see how this, again, I'm always just excited for the end product. I do enjoy the process, but I'm always like in anticipation of like what the end product would be. And so I'm kind of at this point, I know I haven't finished spinning this yet and I don't have the finished fiber, but I am like considering, I love this fiber so much that my next sweater spin might be with a Cormo. Maybe, we'll see, I don't know, but those are my current thoughts. I thought I'd share that with you. Okay, we are going to try and get through the rest. I only have, so that is it for the spinning. And I only have, well, I I have a surprise acquisition. I have one skein of yarn, uh, which was given to me so kindly by my friends. Uh, so my friend Megan, who I've already mentioned, I've mentioned in other podcasts because she's the best, has another podcast on YouTube called A Naughty Mess, and she uh, did a yarn swap with someone from New Zealand, and so her, Sylvan, and Katie all did or uh, participated in this yarn swap with her from New Zealand, um, and so they got back some yarn from New Zealand, and I was not part of this yarn swap, but I was there during knit night when they were dividing the yarn between each other and it was like this one skein that they were all like I don't know you could have it um and so Megan was so nice and she was like Ariel these are your colors so you can have this skein if you'd like it um and I still feel so bad because I did not participate in this yarn swap and I still got yarn um but thank you so much for being so kind um and I'm really happy that I now have a skein of yarn from New Zealand. So here it is. This is Dream Fire Artisan Yarns. And I got it in, so, okay. So this is Merino DK, twist on twist. 200 meters for 100 grams. And it's a one of a kind color. And again, the light has, the sun has gone away, but it is a pink and yellow color. And it, it is definitely a me color. And again, they're so nice for um, letting me have this skein. So thank you, thank you. Very excited to use it for something. Uh, so yeah, so kind, so, so nice. I definitely did not have to do that. Um, but yeah, thank you. So uh, that is it for the content for this podcast. I am running out of battery on my camera, so I hope I can finish this up pretty quickly. Uh, thank you again so much for watching. If you'd like, let me know in the comments down below uh, what you have been working on while listening or watching this podcast. And feel free to follow me on Instagram or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, on, my, on Instagram, I am Ari Nitz, same name as this podcast. And that is also my username on Ravelry. And yeah, that is all for today. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.